Hello everyone, so we're back tonight with Rachna Ta-da! And uh, a second Petri dish with a mystery guest. Um, and yesterday I said how to set the eyepieces of the microscope um, so that it matches what's in focus on your video screen. Um, if you have a similar setup, we have a Nikon SMZU microscope um, over here. And we have uh, on ours, we got it with two side ports, one where our A6000 Fujifilm? No. What is it? Sony. Sony. Sony camera. Uh, is attached and we also have a trinocular port on the top uh, which is at the moment not in use but if we were to want to use it we could have two cameras or alternatively change the position of either this camera to here as well. Um, we also have our lamp that's attached at the bottom and our eyepieces where you can switch from just binocular view so you would only see through the binoculars or binocular and photo, which you're seeing when I project what's here to you guys. But yesterday I told you how to set the eyepieces, eyepieces and I put it at, um, I said to start at minus five, um, but I have to correct myself. It's actually you start at zero. And first what you're going to do is you're going to set what's in focus on the bottom here to your screen, your computer screen, what you're seeing. Then you will match your eyepieces starting at the zero notch on the top uh, and rotate one eye so starting with your right eye uh, to the proper measurement that belongs to you and then your left eye afterwards closing the opposite eye as you go and that's and then you should jot down your eyepiece measurements um, in case you have multiple users of your microscope okay so let's start so as you can see this here is not in focus for neither you nor I. So I start here um, by leveling off the microscope here at the top, making sure it's level not further down by adjusting the focus here and now. So I start at zero and then I do adjust the focus to see here what is very clear on the screen it's starting to come into focus here and then I'm going to adjust it even further until it's very crisp. And that to me, I use something with letters and tiny little letters from a stamp that um, is missing some letters now that the kids have gotten to it over the years. So I want to make sure that A that's in the middle there, that little dot on top of the A is really crisp as crisp as I can get it. And I think it is. I can even zoom in to do so. And I want to make sure that it is perfect. All right. And once I've done that, I'm going to make sure that these are both set at the zero line on top, which they are. And I'm going to start with my right eye and I'm going to turn my right eye, closing my left until turning it either right or left until it is as clear as I saw it on the computer screen. And I'm going to look away quickly like they tell you at the optometrist optometrist opsis and close my left eye and do it with my left eye making sure that that one is also clear and then the images should match perfectly to each other and remember what you see in the microscope binoculars itself will be slightly different because it will look like a three-dimensional image like you're able to fly right through it whereas the screen in front of you will be a two-dimensional image that being said that's out of the way we can zoom out tonight we have rack now we're going to visit her with her thrips here little buddies that she's been feasting on and I'll give you a little recap yesterday we had there she is good evening Rachna nice to see you yesterday we had Rachna we had given Rachna um, the sweet Allison leaf it's been decaying over the last couple of days um, 
it was full of thrips when we got it um, and we decided to ziplock it um, and then we found Rachna and then I said I'd give Rachna the thrips um, to see if she would eat them and catch them which um, she has done sorry I adjusted my chair and um, there were about eight 10 to 12 of them on this bush um, bush when I gave them to her yesterday evening by the end of it we could only find about two left so we're going to first say good evening to Rachna and then we'll do some hunting to see if there are any thrips left on the plant and then I have a special guest hopefully still in there for Rachna and hopefully we can get it in fast enough so that you can see how Rachna has progressed with her guest. So here she is. Look how cute she is. Oh, you can really see the nice markings on her back now. She is, for anybody who's just joining us, this is a Western Lynx spider. She is part of a family of spiders that have 18 species of lynx spiders. They are not typical web spiders that you would find um, when you're walking through a forest and you get a web in your face. Um, and they don't use their webs to catch insects, but they do use their webs that they um, <clears throat> do string behind them with silk for balancing and um, for their nest building and holding their eggs. Um, she, we believe, is a female western lynx spider. She's missing the two little boxing gloves that are typically found in front of the male um, face. Um, and she's got, as you notice, these long hairs that stick off of her arms um, all around her arms and her legs. And she uses those uh, to detect um, very, very minute movements from prey, those there, um, and they're all over her arms and legs. Um, she uses them to sense tiny movements. I had read, actually, um, very interestingly, that lynx spiders, um, so green lynx spiders and western lynx spiders, tend to um, also detect odor and the western lynx spider in particular goes to areas on plants um, and they're very good for orchards um, where there is a higher concentration of insect odor um, in order to detect their prey. Mm, I'm sure everybody's heard me talk about her unique eye pattern. It really in this picture only looks like there's two little eyes following us where in reality she has a very different eye structure from many different other spiders, um, where they would be this four over four. She has more of a six going down, and then two eyes at the very bottom um, over her face. Let's check in on her cute little face. Ah, uh, yes. I'll try to angle her here. Gets a little bit of vibration when I do hold her in my hand. So we had found Rachna on our roof. She was on our ceiling, sorry, not on our roof. She was on our ceiling for a couple of days. Um, actually a good week or two. And she hadn't moved very much um, until I was walking through the doorway and I almost walked into her. And then I thought, well, I'm going to capture her in a little cup and see if we can Look at her under the microscope, and who knew it would be so entertaining to have a house pet. All right, so there's our sweet Allison. We're going to start at the bottom side and look for thrips, of which I don't see any, but we weren't particularly lucky at finding any on the stem thus far. Yesterday, we did see Rachnap having her snack of one of them on the stem, but I think she had carried that one away from everything else. And the thrips themselves, um, if you've ever had thrips in your house, 
they sound as horrible as the name. They're a very big invasive pet, or pest, sorry, not a pet, um, that move very quickly. This one um, had me put these little sweet Allison into their very fragrant little tiny plant. You can't see it now because all everything's kind of starting to decay, but um, it's a very fragrant plant. Um, and had we put that into our a jar in our house, um, we probably would have had an infestation of thrips in no time. And we've had that before on an avocado plant. Um, and they are very hard to get rid of. You have to isolate your plants and use insecticidal soaps and um, insecticidal tape. Um, or you get yourself a western lynx spider. I do you see that she's moving her hand, so I'm just going to go over to her quickly. She's doing something. Let's see if I can... She is careening herself, I believe. I don't know if she's eating anything. The thing with the thrips is that they're so small. You get a good picture of her eyes here. Going down the front of her face. Oh, she does not want to be seen that way. Maybe she's moved here a little bit more. She's very fast. Um, and these spiders are also very, very good at jumping. Let's go back down to where we were here. Uh, so they are jumping spiders. I think they can jump something like six times their body length. So she's still pretty small. But... Um, still pretty far and pretty long and they have cat-like reflexes they're often I think that's where they get the name lynx from like a lynx cat they pounce on their prey um, I don't see anything there some pods of the and you could see the thrips climbing around them. So there's Rachna climbing over something. Wants to be in the spotlight. Hello again. She's gonna move. So you could see her webs, her silk threads that she's put um, all over the plant now. And we're looking for those thrips. They're very tiny. Very yellow. Usually the first thing that you can see is, um, is there antennae? But I don't see any. And it could be because she ate them all. There is the carcass of a previous guest. I think that might have been a fly that we had had in her cage. I think that's one of them. Um, we're using very clear petri dishes and um, we might upgrade to a second set of petri dishes that have a twist ring around them. In case you hear this kind of sticking noises, I've taped the petri dish clothes for two reasons. Um, one, against the thrips. And two, as much as I like Dirachna, um, I like rather knowing where she is in my house. I was quite happy when she was on the ceiling and when she went missing from there. I ponder where she was. I don't like feeling that a spider is in my bedroom or anywhere else for that matter. Now, um, on to that. The lynx spiders are not venomous to humans. However, I have heard, not experienced, oh, that might be... Can't get any closer. Maybe something might just be a leaf underneath. 
No, I don't think so. Um, I have not experienced a bite from one. It can hurt, apparently. Ooh. No. See, I think she's a good gardener. Um, so they do bite people, I guess, if they're threatened. And apparently it hurts, like any insect bite, but I don't think it, um, but it's, I've read it's not venomous to people. Probably hurts them. I have seen her claws and her pinchers that she eats with. Looks pretty gnarly. I am gonna flip her. She was facing, oh, she's on the other side anyway. Uh, let's see if there are any on this side. And then I will untape her and put her into, or keep her in this enclosure because she seems to have built some spider structuring web. The other thing I wanted to mention about when I said good farmer was that um, the lynx spiders are very beneficial uh, to orchards in that they eat pests and they often eat pests that are also bigger slightly bigger than they are i know that the green lynx um spiders uh can eat oh she's cleaning them all up can eat um wasps and uh, bees bumblebees or bees in general um, particularly harmful bees or insects like wasps, mosquitoes. And I had read um, in one article that there's the potential even to use um, these type of predatory spiders that um, eat invasive pests that are harmful to crops and infect them with a particular disease um, that I can't remember the disease name at the moment. Um, that when they excrete, um, that one, sorry. When they are finished either with their prey or um, have a bowel movement, uh, and other insects come and eat that bowel movement, that they would then get this disease that kills off the pest but doesn't hurt the spiders. So they could be some sort of pesticide control, a natural one. I just don't know how you'd infect the spiders. Um, yeah, I don't see any left. I'm going to assume that she's eaten them all. So um, mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna put her aside for a minute, let her have a rest. And I'm gonna go to our, our guest tonight tonight on our show we have they open their window because it's raining there we go in we go here a book louse put it in a separate petri dish um or what i assume is a book louse I don't like these guys. I typically find them by the windowsill at the bottom, especially when it's raining. I usually open my window to the window in the living room to find them. They are fast. Um, and getting them in the same jar as the spider is always fun. Because like I said, they are fast and she is even faster. Now around here somewhere, I had a nice little tool that I could use to measure uh, Rachna with. And because, I'm gonna zoom out and see if we can find them again. Because we have a poop house that's live, we can actually tell you how big it is. So I'm gonna stick that thing underneath. And I'm kind of holding this down tight because I really don't feel like having that. Um, go anywhere. So I've used this tool before. I'm just going to clean it quickly because it's um, getting some fingerprints on it. 
That's a handy little tool. There we have. That has, it doesn't look like much, it's a little piece of glass. Kind of looks like a slide um, that you would have for a compound microscope. See, you can kind of see it. it's a little piece of glass here. It's got little dots that you can see in the reflection. And it is under a microscope telling you how big that item is. And that goes to the little um, plus sign. So we can put that underneath our book louse, which I'm going to knock again to the middle of the container if I can. I don't want to lose them. Like I said, they're quite fast. And I think they understand um, not necessarily what's coming, but um, where the, it's about 1.5 millimeters, so let's just give a rough estimate, where the air is coming through on this um, Petri dish. There. We'll look at the recording later and find out how big it actually was, but I think it's around 1.5 millimeters. Grow big. Um, yeah. All right. Put that aside here. And there we go. Thank you. All righty. Now let's let the fun begin. I'm going to very carefully put that thing on the side. And I will open the very scientific tape. Mm. And hope that nobody jumps out at me. Getting um, Rachna into this enclosure was easy. Not easy. Nor was um, getting her out of one enclosure into an, into this one. That wasn't easy at all. Um, I did have her running loose on our desk here for a hot minute. <clears throat> Didn't quite like that too much. And I know because she jumps, I'm just gonna take a little piece of the um, cotton swab that I had in here out. Um, because she jumps, I don't really like the idea of her jumping around at me. And now, how is this magic going to happen? Hmm. Let me ponder. It's amazing to, to know that um, something that's only 1.5 centimeters millimeters big and the other uh, recognized maybe about six millimeters or five and a five, five millimeters or six millimeters. Um, they can make you feel so insecure. <laughs> okay, the bigger ones on this side. So I'm going to try to maybe lift Rachna's lid on the book mouse on the other lid and um, hope it sticks and I can just switch one for the other. Let us see if I can get that thing closer. And then I'm trying to get it now so that you can see Rachna without, it's making a break for it, without um, her directly eating the book loaves because she's really fast. So I was uh, successfully able to transfer the louse. Let me move Rachna into view here. 
and there's the louse on the leaf stem back just right in front of her oh that was that was fast book louse was fast but Rachna is faster let's let's see if we can zoom in here <gasps> Look at that. There you go. Oh, what did I say? She's a better hunter than we are. Okay, so look at that. There's the book louse. I had another one in here. Went away for a minute to go see if I could find another one. And in that time, that's the book louse. There. And there's Ragna. There you can see here. Let's see if I can get her arms. It's a great shot of her just chomping. So you oh wow, this is awesome. You can see her claws are dug right in. And then pretty soon you'll see its abdomen. It kind of squeeze closed and then go and blow right back up. It's a fresh book louse. Mm. And what she's doing is she's pumping it full of venom and a uh, serum toxin that um, liquefies its insides. And there she is in calmness. Enzymes. 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 I guess it's serum. Enzymes is the, word, the proper word. Oh, there it goes. It starts here. You can see how it's She's pushing it full. Let's see if I can get her claws. Focus, there's this, you can see the fluid coming right out of her, her mouth. It's that flashing kind of in the middle. And there's the abdomen. And then there's this flashing that's happening in the middle. I don't think there's um, too much alive, um, anything alive of that of that book that was left. I think I might have smushed that one. She's a much better hunter than I am. Yeah. And usually afterwards, all you see is then a carcass. That's kind of looks like a a peanut shell, if you will. And she's really pumping the whole thing full. There. able to find it better than we could. Let's see turn her to see if we can get a slightly different angle. Without disturbing her too much. No, she, no she's on the other side. Let's see if we can find that angle here. What does she have for us? Oh, even better. This is her underside. And there's our book louse. Here, and that's her underside. There you can see where her legs connect to her abdomen. That's 
little like diamond pattern underneath. And here, see how she really puffs it full. And let's see if I can get a better focus here. focus here and then you can see it really she's really starting to squeeze the juice right out of there and sucking it really dry like out of a straw if you've ever watched a kid drink from a straw there's like nothing left and then she doesn't have to eat the um, the exoskeleton or the shell in layman's terms, the shell of the bug. She just eats everything on the inside. Brilliant. It's really amazing. There's one of her little paws, um, that little black pom-pom. It's now in focus. Um, At one point, she tends to turn it on. I hit the microphone, microscope a little too hard. There's the real close. There's Ragna. She's got these two little dots that are watching. I don't think those are eyes, but there's two dots right underneath. I don't know if you can see them. Um, over, not left-handed here, but. Um, these two little dots here. Figure that out in a second, how to show that. Here's one, and here's one as well. I don't know what those are. I can't really tell from this angle. And because she's given us such a good angle, I don't want to move it too much. She doesn't normally hang out upside down for us. Um, and from the naked eye, you could almost barely see that she has anything uh, in her in her paws. There's its its eye. It's got this clear, glassy eye of the book clouds. You can see she is much bigger than it. And there's not much left. There she is from underneath. You can see in perspective to her, in respect to her, she's, it's really quite small. Yes. Feeding on her book clouds. Nice little snack. For bedtime. I think I had also read about um, <clears throat> lynx spiders is that they're often very active during the day, unlike many other spiders that are nocturnal. Lynx spiders tend to be active during the day and that might come from when they're um, 
pests or so or the prey that they eat are also active because they tend to be searching for pollen or um, active on the plants. Uh, it's a nice underside here. Look at this little hair. Go back to her eating in just a second. At one point she kind of gets impatient with her snack and starts to fumble around with it and then she just throws it off to the side. She'll turn it around maybe once and then she throws it out. I guess it depends on how big the critter was. That's the book close. Here, a little bit more in focus. And this nice critter around it is Rachna. Our house pet for the moment. And she lives in a petri a petri dish on our desk. For the time being. Oh, she's really filling it full now. I find it amazing to watch. Unscripted. It's almost like we zoom in here. She's sucking the head completely into like a little accordion. All squishing together and then she blows the whole thing up. But it's really, you can see now that there's not much structure holding that bug together and she's really able to squeeze the whole thing. She's sucking it all together. Its head is really compressing into its upper abdomen area and then it's there you go pushed full of the enzyme digestive enzymes this is um, this is known as extra oral digestion um, where they break down the nutrients um, inside the prey's body and they immobilize the prey with digestive fluids um, and potent venoms to make bug pudding. There's not much left of that little guy. She's the best one. Little Ragna. This is kind of stopped pumping at it now, so let's see what happens. What she does next. Oh, she's moving it around a little bit. You can see the kind of green eyes on the side of the bug. Um, are really getting squished in and it's really starting to look deformed. Maybe she gives it one more pump and then it'll look more like the bug was. So, mm. the injection of venom uh, precedes the injection of digestive fluids. So they, oops, I want to get this in focus one second. She's turning it around. First comes the venom. Oh, that's nice. You can see right into her little mouth here where she is 
we can see that fluid coming right out of her pincers. She's moving in. Those are in fact her pincers there. She's sucking out the last of whatever she can suck out. It's a little bit unclear because there's a, a, a green plant right above her. We're kind of filming through the branches. I'm trying to get the best that we can do. That's a book lice that she has in her pincers. So first she uses a venom to attack her prey and then she fills it with a digestive enzyme so she can get the most of the protein um, out of her victim and digestive material that she needs to. The branch has really She's moved a little bit for a branch. So the reason uh, that they put the venom first is so that they can attack prey larger than they are. So for instance, um, a wasp or a larger mosquito, if they're very small then they could subdue, subdue the prey because they're quite small. They can't physically maneuver a, a moving, attacking prey. Book lice is quite small and doesn't really have many protective measures against a spider, but a, um, a wasp stings and attacks back. They also, so once they've subdued their prey, they, they use this extra, what do we call it, extra oral digestion. This is then uh, those enzymes that they liquefy their prey with because they can't physically eat the prey itself. It's too, it's too thick or it's too hard coated. Um, so this is an easier way for them to, it's the only way they can digest their prey. Much left here. She's moved just a little bit. It's getting harder to see her. <clears throat> you can see her really grabbing at it and sucking at it. It's pretty clean. She, she doesn't leave too much behind other than the dry carcass. Looks like an empty, empty bag of chips after a movie. And then this way she doesn't actually have to eat the the shell or the skeleton um, because she's already digested, liquefied and digested the insides so that she can consume all of the nutrients that she needs. Okay. That's great. See, it's getting a little bit more wet there on the right hand side of the carcass. It's here, oh, there we go. It's getting a little bit more wet. And then it's all gonna get 
sucked away. I'm trying to bring that really into focus. Sucked away. By Ragnar. You can see there's some fluid moving into the creature. It's just at that area where the plant is starting to create a green line. There she is. There's Rachna here. And that's the Oklaus. You can see there's not much left of the Oklaus at all. She's very gracefully moving it about in her front paws. I keep calling them paws, but. She's also moving her. There. Get a different angle. Can I give her pause? Oh, she's back at moving it around. And give us a fascinating trip tonight. I still haven't been able to figure out in the last you know, week that we've kind of had Rachna how much a spider like this eats on a daily basis. It's really hard to see and hard to find that information. Mm, I found forums where people have found western spiders, um, sorry, western lynx spiders and um, have kept them, but it's not very specific as to how much they feed their spiders. They do feed them crickets. People have small crickets, maybe the type that you feed a lizard or, or so, but she wants to hide her prey from us. to see that. This is where she usually starts rotating it. The last little chomps. And then she'll toss it. Toss it aside. And she rotates it. Of course we can't see that part. Since we can't see anyways, we might as well rotate and see if we can get a different angle if she moves for us. Let's see, let's see. Oh, there she goes. So she has dropped it. Let me just move her. And there are her pictures right there. Maybe I'll take a picture of that to show you. You can see she doesn't have anything left in her pinchers, but she has her mouth there that she's cleaning. She's got something very red at the tip. Um, and she has here, you can see her underside quite well. There. There's her underside. That's her mouth with the two kind of mustardy brown pieces and then they kind of open sideways and then there's two small claws on top. Um, that's also part, that's the part that the other day I said looks a bit like if you were to flip an octopus upside down they've got these two claws as well, like a beak. Um, it's kind of looking like a beak and it also opens and that's what she pierces her prey with um, At least in my observation She 
she's covered in little tiny hairs that are great for adjusting. Let's see if I can find that little bug. I don't see it. She got rid of it somewhere. Couldn't find it the first time. So, <clears throat> so spiders can um, fast. They don't have to eat for a very long time. So going back to the question of how often do they have to eat, they can fast for a very long time, um, which requires the active proteins um, in the digestive fluids to be synthesized rather quickly um, or to be reasonably stabilized for long periods of time. Let me get her more into focus here. And um, the use of the um, enzymes, enzymes outside of the protective milieu of the spider's body requires the incorporation of its assisting proteins that regulate the activity and decelerate the degradation of activity com components in the open or in un unpredictable environments inside the prey's body. Third, digestive enzymes uh, fluids need to be very potent as only very small amounts are produced and released by the spider to quickly dissolve a potentially large amount of prey tissue um, in a small amount of time. And finally, the mode of digesting, digesting extra orally uh, may have the beneficial side effect that it allows spiders to defend themselves against infections from uh, before pathent my goodness, before potential pathogens enter their body. It may therefore be um, not surprising um, if immune proteins are found in digestive fluids, as is an article um, from BMC Genometrics, Genome, Genomics, Genomics uh, published in 2017, states by Andre Walter Jesper Bechsgrad and others. We can link that article later. Those were direct quotes for sourcing. I am not an expert. I am learning as I go and we find articles as we are doing our streams or videos and we pass them on as a learning resource. So we're just going to let her digest. That was quite fun. I might try and see if I can flip her over for one last good night picture. There she is. Happily fed. Looking as though nothing has happened. Active and ready as always. Good night, Rachna. I a ma to bed. Thanks for joining tonight, and toodaloo, until next time, bye.